January 29th, 2013. After the release of Dire Eyes, Zombies was in the worst state it had ever been in. For the first time in Zombies history, the community were beginning to turn on Jimmy Zielinski, the current creative design director of Zombies. After all, he was on a terrible run of maps. The last five maps he had directed were Shangri-La, Moon, Transit, Newtown and now Die Rise. Some would say he went 0 for 5. In order to keep the zombie community from abandoning Black Ops 2, something needed to change. And that something, or should I say someone, was Jason Blundell. Jason's first map as a design director was Mob of the Dead. Mob of the Dead changed the landscape of zombies forever adding changes and making creative decisions that stuck with zombies until this day. Part inventory, interconnected storylines and quest like gameplay fundamentally changed the zombies mode forever. And perhaps without realising it, Jason Blundell proved that basically he was the guy to take zombies to the next stage. Blundell did things differently to the way Jimmy did. I think, to be honest, they treated the modes completely differently. Zelinski innovated in features. He bought things like perks, pack a punch, buildable, special rounds, grief and turns. Whether these features were implemented correctly is another thing, but it's fair to say that the fundamentals of zombies are down to him. However, map design was where Zelinski struggled. Shangri-La is a tight map with small margins for error. Five is a tight map with small margins for error. Verrucht is a tight map with small margins for error. Even on transit, the buildings like the power room are tight with small margins for error. Zelinski tried to punish the players by making the map unfair and challenging, but this limited him on the maps he could make as he all ended up feeling identical to play. Blundell fundamentally changed his design philosophy by making the maps almost a character in itself. They were no longer just backdrops to the game, but actually interacted with the story, and every map made had a purpose and felt like it was made with a sense. Blundell's first map, Mob of the Dead, showed this. Alcatraz Island isn't just the location they've ended up in, it's part of the universe, it's part of the narrative. Just by the map alone, we can tell so much about the story. What type of people our characters are, their motivations, their backstory, their attitudes toward life, and their goals are all told by the map being on Alcatraz and the connotations of the island. Blundell had more depth and characterisation in one map than Zelinsky did in 13. Zelinsky wrote caricatures. Blundell wrote characters. In Mob of the Dead, the themes and lessons of the story of Icarus are prevalent. But what if I told you that on his first map, Jason Blundell would fall victim to the very same parable that he refers to on his debut map? Jason Blundell self prophesizes his rise and fall. In fact, we see that even in the opening loading page of Mob of the Dead, the quote, a cat has nine lives. Guess how many maps Blundell has erected until Black Ops 4? The ninth map was the one that began his downfall, and ironically, it was a remake of his first. He ran out of lives. From Origins to Revelations, Blundell did not miss. Every single Zombies map that came out from his creative team was amazing. Sure, a few maps weren't as good as the others, like Zetsu and Revelations, but overall, it was fair to say, just like Icarus, Blundell was soaring. With his guidance, Zombies had gone from the worst state it had ever been in in Black Ops 2 to the best it had ever been in in Black Ops 3. The Zombies community was thriving, the mode was truly at its peak, and Blundell was to thank. Now, in Black Ops 3, every map had a ton of things to do. Loads of easter eggs and ciphers to find, interesting job rooms to use, and a variety of locations to explore. He also changed the story direction completely, changing the theme from a semi-realistic, historical-based conspiracy about the government and the Illuminati to a more fantastical story with mythical beings and supernatural weapons and stories. However, the signs were there. Throughout Black Ops 2 and 3, Blundell only ever introduced two perks, Widow's Wide and Electric Cherry, and instead opted to put features from some perks, like PhD, into gobblegums. It was clear that Blundell was not a fan of the perk system as we would later see in Black Ops 4. We would also once again in Black Ops 3, didn't really get a satisfied ending in Revelations. Like Origins did prior, we were left on another cliffhanger and the community was still left with unanswered questions. This is coupled with Blundell's inability to give a straight answer. 
And after a bit, it just got tedious. We wanted to know things that he just wouldn't tell us. He started adding ciphers and easter eggs that were too hard, and he even said that some would never be solved. What's the point in adding them? This leads to an issue where ciphers in the early Blundell maps like Mob of the Dead would be solved years after release of the map, but would only hint towards something that we already knew because of how long it took to figure out. Overall, Black Ops 3 was a huge success, but the direction that Zombies was going in was starting to become more obvious as time went on. When Black Ops 4 was announced, we thought that Zombies couldn't get better than what we had in the previous game. And we were right. Black Ops 4 Zombies was nothing short of a disaster, from even before the game came out. Pictures of the new UI were leaked online, and it was bad. I distinctly remember seeing a screenshot from Blood of the Dead and hoping it was fake, but release day made all of our nightmares come true. The perk system was completely changed and was intended to make players change their loadouts every day and remove crutch perks like Jug, Double Tap and Quick Revive. However, what ended up happening was they just made a different set of crutch perks like Dying Wish. Specialist weapons had a tier system and were given to you straight away, removing a quest that was present in most of Black Ops 3 maps. Talismans were added, yeah. And the awful elixir system nerfed any fun upgrades you should get for the trade-off of being able to use them whenever you wanted. Despite Black Ops 4 releasing with four different maps, Zombies was a disaster. And though the community wanted to give the game a chance, the writing was on the wall. Blundell's ambition, just like his predecessor, was to be the beginning of the end for his Zombies career. And on February 28, 2020, Blundell left Treyarch leaving Black Ops 4 and Zombies behind forever. He flew too close to the sun and the wings had finally burned. So, what was the catalyst for Zombies' capitulation in Black Ops 4? Well, obviously a big part of it was funding and corporate greed. It's clear that the longer Black Ops 4 went on, the less interested Activision got for the mode, and put more and more resources into, I imagine, Warzone. But to say that's the only reason would be wrong. The creative decisions in Black Ops 4 were abysmal, with almost none at landing. You can see this in Black Ops Cold War, as it is way closer to Black Ops 3 than it is to Black Ops 4. The Chaos story didn't land either, with Voyage of Despair being one of the worst maps ever made in Zombies history, despite the huge amount of effort they put into that map. Black Ops 4 also made promises they didn't or couldn't keep, and backtracked on a lot of ideas they set out with. Factions mode was originally announced by Treyarch in July 2018, and just never happened. And the Chaos story was supposed to be the main story of Black Ops 4, however this ended up being scrapped and they went back to the premise crew after only 4 maps. In fact, in Black Ops 4 there are 5 separate crews you play as in this game, which shows a complete lack of narrative focus and it's just a complete mess. Blundell changed a tried and tested formula, disregarding what made zombies, zombies. And look, there are positive things about Black Ops 4, but that is just what makes it so much worse. It could have been so much better. The radios in the story were some of the best we had ever seen. The character's dialogue was at its wittiest. The problem was, it just wasn't zombies. It wasn't the same zombies that we had come to love. It had become something it could never really be. To go from such a high in Black Ops 3 to such a low was so disheartening to zombie fans, and we just lost all faith in Treyarch and Call of Duty in their ability to give us a good zombies game. Faith that really, to this day, has not been restored. But look, Jason Blundell's intention was never to ruin zombies, and I'm sure there are plenty of behind the scenes things that we will simply never know about. He gave us the best years of Zombies, and the Black Ops 3 era of cards will go down as when Zombies truly peak. However, all good things must come to an end, and I think what was most disappointing about all of this was the way it happened. Blundell just slowly disappeared throughout the scenes, and he never got to tell the ending of a story that he had been setting up for six years. Just like Icarus, he flew too close to the sun and paid the price.